I mean, Hello. you look tall. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hello little buns, it is Steph. Welcome back to my home. Today I have a special guest, Chase Ross. You guys know Chase Ross. I recently did a meetup with him, which a video will be out either already or very soon about that. And you know, he's my fave little bee. And he runs a channel where he talks all about trans stuff and, and all kinds of things. Why don't you tell them a little bit about you? Did you just out me <laughs> as trans? No, I'm kidding. I talk about trans things, I review prosthetics, and I talk a lot about mental health and sex and just trans topics that people don't usually like to talk about. Yeah. So that's what I do. Go watch him. Uh, today we're going to talk about the differences and kind of compare and contrast between surgeries for trans men and surgeries for trans women. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe differences in recovery and in things like that. Yeah. So, why don't we start with, um, I can jump right into the surgery that I've had. Yes, so, I have questions. Okay, so I've had a facial feminization surgery, which was actually a combination of five procedures. This surgery was to reverse the effects of testosterone on my facial bone structure and in my well, not even in my opinion, the way I describe it and the way to understand it best is to understand that it's reconstructive because it's reversing the effects of something on your skin, on your face, on your bone structure. Do you have any questions before we, before? Yeah. Okay. Five? Five. Five procedures? Yes. So people sometimes look at my face and they're like, nothing's different. I hate when people say that. I see that all the time and people say that, I'm like, um, no. I mean, I understand where they're coming from because I didn't get any new features. Mm. Um. But I do look different because I reversed all the bad shit. I will show you a picture. The picture on my health card, I won't show you any information. You will understand that my face is different. Uh, so the five procedures I had, my forehead was entirely reconstructed. They broke it and reconstructed it. Right. My jaw, my mandible and chin were completely, this whole area was reduced a lot, mm -hmm. reshaped, contoured. My trachea was shaved. Mm -hmm. And then I had a lip lift and lip augmentation. Lip augmentation, lip, okay, oh wow. Lip lift is, they cut out a piece of skin below my nose and they lift the lip and stitch it higher. Oh, so like this is like it's lifted yeah yeah um, <laughs> thumbnail and then they took the skin that they took out of there and they put it in my upper lip to make it more volu voluminous oh. more volume without looking like a duck lip okay um and that's the five things i had done okay so it's not like new face who did no like, i mean sometimes it is yeah and that's okay and that's what you. they want to go for but i didn't want that i wanted a very natural result and i wanted to look like me before testosterone fucked me up oh yeah that's, that's always been my goal I just, it's its interesting that your your face was like literally peeled off. Like, <laughs> literally. I want to see a video of it. I don't know if that exists. I don't know if the doctor recorded it, but I wish he did. I think you have to request it before. Shit. You could ask I'll me. I'll go back in time. Yeah. <laughs> or if you have any other surgeries. Hey, can you record this? Oh, please? I will. Really? Like, oh, I will. Like the next surgery that I'm getting, not SRS, I'm getting some body things done that I'm paying for myself. Not using GoFundMe funds for the SRS for this. And that doctor actually is really big on social media and he's going to record it whether I want it. <laughs> I mean, he's obviously, he would ask for consent, but I'm going to get it recorded anyway. All right. Yeah. We get that age restricted if you put it on YouTube. Though. I might not put it on YouTube. Maybe <laughs> Instagram or something. Yeah. We'll <laughs> It'll be a little bit too uh, yeah. <laughs> graphic. <laughs> So I had top surgery done. Mm -hmm. So that is basically the masculinization of the chest. So basically what my chest looked like before estrogen fucked me up. <laughs> right, exactly. Right? Fucking hormones. Reconstructive, reconstructive, yes. reconstructive. So it's uh, also called top surgery, double mastectomy, or there are other, I had the procedure that I had. Yes. The procedure that I had done was called double incision. Uh -huh. So they basically cut on top of the titty and then underneath, mm -hmm. and then they kind of put the two skins oh, together. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean that's like the most basic. They okay. also do stuff with muscle because they want to make sure that the scar is kind of like under the muscle, so the pec. Right, so when you right. Pecs, so that it doesn't it, it grows properly. Exactly. So muscle. when the pec goes, the scar kind of goes underneath. Right. So that it doesn't look like you that's really good. have scars. Like oh, it's kind of hidden. Yeah, I don't have any pecs, so you still see my scars, but that's okay. That's okay. And then they cut your nips, mm -hmm. and then they they reattach. Them. Um, yeah, they reattach them okay. right here. Interesting. Yeah. And like the, the different methods, is it purely based on personal choice or is there certain methods that are better for certain chest sizes? Yeah, it's usually better based on how big your chest is. Okay, yeah. that makes so sense. So some people have like really small chests and their procedure is called like keyhole or okay. like hairy. And that's like yeah. a tiny little hole where they remove like the yeah. tiny bit of tissue. They like cut around the nipple. And, and that then... leaves the least scarring. Yeah, there's like basically, some some have like little scars on the side of their nipples, but that's it. Okay. Usually you cut around the nipple and then it kind of like, you kind of like put the skin into each other, oh, so it's like, and then the nipple's kind of there, oh, so it's like, like, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So That's you're kind of just taking all the tissue around it, cutting the skin, and kind of putting it together. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So let's talk about recovery for this. Yes. My entire recovery was documented, so you guys can see it if you want to. I'll put a link to the playlist in the description box. Um, but for me, I was, 
I mean, I was so high on drugs. But I was able to record about an hour after surgery, and I was able to remove the bandages about a week after surgery, and about a month after I looked kind of swollen, but I could do things. Yes. Um, and then it took about three or four months, maybe even till very recently, where I felt like there's no more swelling. Mm. But what about you? For because it's very different because there's lots of muscle here that you use for moving arm stuff. Oh, man. So like, what what was that like? Yeah, how I'm actually surprised how long it took. For, yours is so fast. Your recovery. Like I, I have that Norse blood. Like you came over to my house the first mm -hmm. time we met. And oh you, yeah, you were like, I was still very swollen at that. Yeah, point. but you were like a month or something post op or something. Um, two months, two months. I was months. December sixteenth, and I was at your house in February. Sometime. Yes. So six weeks is usually the the time that it takes that you can go back to work, go back to the gym, like raise your arms like this. Um, my recovery yes. took a lot longer, honestly, because um, I didn't want to move my arms up because it stretches so you your scars. Really exercise? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to stretch my scars because a lot of scars stretch if you like. Okay, lift. that makes. Oh, of course. You're yeah, right. yeah. So I did a lot. So then I got issues with my shoulders because mm. I wasn't moving my shoulders as much as I should be. So, like so. The muscles kind of atrophied or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I had to do yoga. I had to do yoga for like three months. Yoga, yoga, yoga daddy. Yeah, yoga daddy. That's so so, so that I could like go. But usually it's six weeks, and some people it's like way way earlier. You can like do stuff. Stuff, which is great, but it's hard to like pick up things like you're, you're basically like a little dinosaur like this for like three weeks You can't people have to do everything for you, you got to change your bandages But yeah, you That's get the fine. bandages and then like a week later they take them off and they take the drains out Did you have drains? No, I didn't oh, yeah. a lot of FMS surgeons use drains yes. But he didn't for some reason Interesting. and I didn't have any issues because maybe the way that he do it He, he do it is like he, the the fluid that you have like regenerizes itself or something I'm not sure I think it might be the way he stitched or maybe it's where he made the incision yeah, because maybe. I've seen other people have drains in their in their like forehead oh, where the incision was so that it doesn't build up and like create like a like a bubble of blood I've seen uh, behind the ear behind the ear um, drains that's where yeah the that's drain usually comes it comes yeah. it's in your forehead though mm. and then it snakes back here and then I'll uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't have one, okay. and I'm happy because it was kind of like, spooky. The drains were scary. It was like the thing I was the most scared about. But then, coming out, you oh no, it? I didn't feel oh, it. Good. I think I was like, well, you're, you're done. Yeah, yeah, I was done. I was numb, but yeah. I have full sensation in my chest now. I can feel my nips, so that's yeah. good. I have sensation back in my scalp too. They said it may never come back, but it did. You didn't have sensation. No, it was numb for like four months, four or five months. Oh my god. And I didn't. I wouldn't even know I got it back unless because I get extensions put in. Yes. And I can feel like it hurts. So yeah. that's the only reason I know that I have sensation back in my scalp. Huh. Let's talk about surgeries we have not had. Yes. Neither of us have had bottom surgery. SRS. Some people call things gender confirmation surgery, yes. but to me, FFS is gender confirmation surgery, top surgery is a gender oh, confirmation 100%. surgery. One hundred percent. So I like it as an umbrella term, would yes. you agree with me on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Okay. So I still call it SRS because it's a sexual organ. These are very different. I feel like, and I may be wrong on this, so correct me if mm -hmm. I'm wrong, but I feel like SRS for trans women, like vaginoplasty, mm -hmm. is way more advanced. That's what a lot of people think. Is that true or not? Um, like, I feel like it's been around longer. Uh, maybe. Okay. It's funny because the history of phalloplasty, which is one of the the, the like uh, bottom surgeries that trans men can get, yes. comes from the military. When soldiers would get their wieners blown off, they oh needed- Oh my god. Oh, you can't be a man without a dick. So, so it's been a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's where phalloplasty time. came from. Um, it's really, really advanced. I think that Good. there's a myth that it's not advanced because there's not that I many results. That. There's not many results online and not many people who've had phalloplasty talk about it because they're like done with with their transition right. to talk about it okay, anymore. Okay, fair. Yeah, but the results are really good. They're not amazing, like the best thing in the entire world. Like, I, from what I know from like MTF bottom surgery, it's it's like almost functioning completely as if you never, like th that's how you, you always had it. With, with trans women? Yeah, the only issue is that it, it doesn't get be. wet. Right? See, I think sometimes they they can. Oh. I think there is a new method where they put some kind of saliva gland or something. I don't know this for a fact. I, this is so something cool. I've heard. I might be wrong. If you guys know the the real 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 about this, tell me in the comments. Tell us in the comments. But I think there is um, a way to have it self lubricate. I don't. Not every surgeon does this because there's right. so much variety in, uh -huh. in people's methods. Oh some people end up with a straight up gaping hole. Some people end up with a fully functioning fucking vagina with yeah. just no internal, no womb, no uterus right. or whatever. Aesthetic. It's amazing. Aesthetically, Same it's thing very with, good. A lot of surgeons yeah. don't even you don't even end up with scars. Sometimes you have scars kind of like coming up along yes. the sides. Yeah. But if Dr. Suporn yeah. in Thailand, for example, I don't think anybody has scarring. That's I don't know how he does that, but I I think it's he stitches really close to the labia or something, so oh. it's just like a texture. I don't know. That's so cool. Yeah. It, it's, it's so cool. Science. I know. Science. I love They're science. They're making genitals for us that we were always. It's for. unfocused. Oh my god, how long is that? Ha! How long know. is that for? Move in more a little bit. Sorry. Okay. I don't know how close you want me to be. Well, I just don't. It's fine. We, well, we should both be. It should be evenly right. balanced. I'm like, <laughs> well, here. What about right here? I mean, if you turn to the side too, that's fine. Like but this? just turn inwards instead of like. 
You know what I mean? I'll, I'll turn like this. I'll be here. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be like this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, do you want to talk about what, what they do with the surgery? Sure, the okay. Maybe the one that you're going to have? So the one I'm going to get is different from, for example, Dr. Broussard in Montreal, uh, who uses penile inversion to create the vagina. Dr. Suporn has something called the Suporn method, which he explains on his website, which I will link in the description box. He is retiring in 2018 or 2019, so I'm kind of worried, but I, I'm hoping he's training somebody to do the same oh. kind of... I, I hope he is. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he has a team that does vaginoplasty as well. Okay. So I think... It's gonna be okay, but his method is different. Very low, low scarring. Uh, his most of his patients recover in eight weeks with a fully like they can use their vagina in eight weeks. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Maybe not for sex, but for everything else, they can walk around. Everything's fine after eight weeks with most patients. That's not everybody. Mm -hmm. But all the people that I've talked to that went to him, eight weeks max recovery. Um, and they were walking around like shopping and exploring Thailand like days after surgery. Basically, more or less, they take the existing anatomy and they reconstruct it into a vagina. And for if, if people aren't really aware of this, vaginas and penises and the internal things connected to them are very similar in terms of the components, mm -hmm. right? So if you just like move those around, if you remix your genitals, you can. It's pretty much the same. Yes. Like there's not much of a difference in terms of what goes into genitals, whether it's a penis or a vagina or anything else. Yeah, because we all started with the same thing. Right, exactly. It just, it just it morphs differently. Yeah, exactly. Right? So I don't know the exact process, but there's surgery videos all over the internet for SRS. I don't know for phalloplasty, but I'm guessing there might be. There's some. And you can definitely look at those if you're interested. I will try to find at least one and link it in the description box because I don't know how to explain it in detail. But remembering that there are many methods and penile inversion is only one of them. But typically with penile inversion, I know that your depth is based on the length of your penis pre-op. But I think with Dr. Suporn, that is not the case. Ooh. I might be wrong. Okay. There's just so many reasons why his method is different and why I prefer it. Yeah, so I feel like that could be an issue for trans women who have been on estrogen for a while. Exactly, like, there's a lot of shrinkage. Yes, things just aren't. genitals change. Right, and I'm okay with, because this isn't about sex for me. I'm not getting a vagina because I want to have sex with one. I'm getting one because I'm supposed to have one and it's not there. Right. And I'm not really concerned about the look of it because every vagina is different. I don't want somebody else's vagina, I want my vagina. Whether it has big labia, small labia, whether it looks cute or it looks like a beast, mm -hmm. which I would be okay with because that would have a powerful ass vagina. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Oh, and I guess I should explain that in every single method, the clitoris is created using the head of the penis. And I know the clitoris, I think they have actually a very similar number of nerve endings, but the clitoris is so much smaller. Yeah. That it's packed into one space. Yeah, it's all concentrated. Right. There. So yeah. it, it's, people think it has more nerve endings and that it's more, you know, that it's different, but it's really quite the same. Yeah. It's the same piece of flesh that grows into a penis right. head. Because it was the same thing at, in the beginning. Right, exactly. What about phalloplasty? How does that work? Well, there are like different methods for bottom surgery, but the one I'll talk about is phalloplasty. Okay. But there's okay. also metoidioplasty. Oh, yeah. okay. So that one. I've never heard of that one. That one's when they take the because when you go on testosterone, your yes. clit grows. Okay. So they just cut the ligaments underneath, and that becomes your wiener, oh. and then they make a scrotum out of the lips. So that's metoidioplasty. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And, yeah. So phalloplasty is the other one where they take an arm graft or a graft, a skin graft from your leg or from your butt, somewhere on your somewhere. body, depending on where you want it. Usually the main one is your forearm, mm -hmm. and then they create a penis with it, and then they like would, the shaft. The shaft, like and this, then the big skin, like yeah. thick part. Exactly. <laughs> okay. And then they do like a urethra lengthening, so okay. that the urethra can come out of the tip. And then they also take a nerve out of your arm because the arm has an extra nerve that you take. So they take the nerve out, and then they hook it up to a nerve. Oh no, like shit! That is so hip. advanced. That yeah. is so cool. Right, right. So then you have actual feeling all through the phallus. So people are like phalloplasty wow. doesn't look real. It doesn't look cis. It doesn't look. I don't uh, care if it looks cis. Yeah, you don't have feeling. You don't have sexual feeling. This gives you like That's tactical crazy. feeling, and it gives you sexual function and stuff like that. That's Obviously, so there's some cool. complications on every one has feeling but of course that's that's the risk with any type of surgery yeah absolutely and so I'm gonna ask the questions y'all are wondering of course and you should ask me if you have yes a, um, how does getting erect work does it just work like like it would for a cis guy no like that's, see, that's the okay. one thing so how yeah. does that is there a way to control that yes or, okay so how does that work so most people can get an erectile device and that's not the, there are multiple stages uh -huh. to the surgery right? so okay. that's usually stage two or three uh -huh. and there are different types that you can get there's one that's like a malleable rod so you kind of look like you have a semi-hard wiener all the time but you could click it up like a Barbie doll arm. Yes, 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 oh exactly. My gosh. It actually makes it click. Yeah, and then the other one is that you have a pump in your scrotum and you pump it up, and it's like a two-cylinder thing that. Pumps oh, up. like where a testicle. Like yes, would, exactly. Okay. That's yeah. interesting. So, so you that's pump a little it bit. up, and it goes and goes <laughs> like this. 
Yeah, and they've actually made a new one that is specifically for trans guys because um, oh, great. the uh, the head, the glands of the penis is not the same as a cis guy would because mm. it's a different type of tissue. It is so, differently. So it sometimes the rod can go can pierce through the penis, which is not good because you just had surgery. Oh, I so, would not want that one. Yeah, so there's a new erectile device that they've come out with that actually has a head of a glands. So okay. uh, so it's cool. So then it's like harder at the top. Oh. Yeah, so it is really, really advanced. Yeah, it's I know just, none of this, yeah. and I think a lot of people have a big misunderstanding, yeah. and they think that, you know, bottom surgery for trans guys is so bad. Yeah. But this has been very enlightening, and no, I'm no, glad that really I've, cool. like, I hope you guys have learned about this. Are there any other surgeries that trans men might get, um, maybe that are less well known? Like, I think yesterday we were talking about something called, um, man sculpting? Yeah, ma yeah, man sculpture, or man sculpting, okay. yeah. So that's usually when they do liposuction in areas where you have fat, mm -hmm. um, in more, like, female areas, so like, your hips. Right. They usually like so that your hips instead of going like this, they they, they really right. go more square. Okay, right. And I've actually had friends who have gotten this and I see before and after pictures, I'm like, oh my goodness, it works. Okay. Like it is fantastic. Like yes, you can work out and do that, but if you're gonna have top surgery anyways mm -hmm. and you wanna do this. And the, the surgeon might offer it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. No, yeah. not every surgeon's gonna offer it. Yeah, so it's interesting because that's this you know, you can get like no hips. I mean we but all I've have never bones. heard of that surgery before. We all have bones. Right, of we course. can't get rid of bones. No, and you but can't there's get lots bones. of cis guys that have white hips. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you when you like like yeah. suction that, it creates a more mm, figure. Okay, it's funny because the surgery that you're thinking of. Yes. Yes. So that's another one that a lot of people aren't aware of. People think of breast augmentation, they think of um, SRS right. for trans women. Even FFS is not as well known. It might be now. Um, but there's also body shaping procedures. And mm. a lot of the time people, they end up going to places with uh, injectables, which are actually kind of black market. I don't think they're actually legal. Mm -mm. And I mean, sometimes they're safe. Right? I'm not going to ever recommend somebody do that, but if you're going to do that, I'm not going to tell you not to either. And that's usually silicone, and that kind of hardens in the body, and it turns into basically like a little pocket of fat. Mm. So when you lose and gain weight, it moves with it. You have to be very, very confident in the person you're going to, and you have yes. to like... Yeah, I've seen some stuff. It's it's a bit scary to so, like do your It's research, not as common yeah. as people think to get like the cement and then have your legs rot off. Oh. That's not as common as people Jesus. think. That is not as common as people mm -hmm. think. There's lots of people that have had these injectables right here on YouTube that had not tell you, and they look fantastic, mm -hmm. and you would never like. But they, but they're not going to say because it's black market and they yeah. don't want you to do that, right? Yeah. But yeah. it's it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, people will opt for that option if they do not produce a lot of fat on their own, if their metabolism is really fast, if they're very very thin, um, because the option that I'm going to look into, which is a BBL, which is a Brazilian butt lift, there's a better term for mm -hmm. it because I hate the stereotype that Brazilian women have big butts and are super sexual and hot. This is it like a butt lift? Yeah, so the way it works is this was made originally for, for cis women, but like it, there's no difference no. really in terms of like moving the body fat around. It's a body. <laughs> yeah, um, they basically liposuction fat out of your body in certain areas, and then they put it in areas where you want it to create the shape that you want. Uh, so for me, I'm not so concerned with my butt because I feel like I have a fairly round little, you know. You do got I that like booty. my butt. Thank you very much. You do got that booty. Thank you. As somebody who's seen it in real life, not with its clothes off. No, no, no. <laughs> but a lot of the clothes that I wear, my ass cheeks hang out yes. because I love them. Yes. And I want people to see them. Yes. Um, Disclaimer. Yes. Um, so what I'm interested in though is not necessarily growing my butt, but it's creating the hip shape mm. with fat. The opposite of what you're describing. Can we just, like, can we just I'll give you my I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we I just don't know. switch a little bit. Yes. Oh, that'd be so great if we could just switch. Just pieces. If and when I get this procedure, I will document it on YouTube fully. Mm -hmm. You will know exactly what's up because I know a lot of people do not talk about body surgeries for trans women, especially when they get injections because they're not, that's bad. Like You can't talk about illegal things. Right. Um, but I want to document, I want, I want people to know that there's other options. And this one is great for people that maybe are of more, more substance to their, like more thickness. Because I'm, I'm a very, I'm kind of a muscular, like I have lots yeah. of tissue, right? And I can gain weight very easily if I want to. So if I have to for this surgery, I will. But I'm excited for the idea of this because the one thing that I feel like my body is missing that still makes me dysphoric is hips. It's not even about being hot, but it's about having... It's you. Yeah. It's your body. It's about, I feel like I'm supposed to have these hips here mm -hmm. and I don't have them. Right. That's the simple. That's the simplest. It's like don't overthink it, right? No. It's not about me having handles. The men can hold on to this. No, this is about me missing. Be having missing phantom hips. And the thing is that it's not like that might be a thing even if you were cis. If you oh, were absolutely. Cis women, because some cis women have like this surgery was created for cis women. Right. right? But I mean, it wasn't made for hips for cis women. It was made for right. butts. Right. But but you can get hips too if right. you're a cis woman. So right. Of some, course. Some cis women don't of have course, hips. Absolutely. Right. So. And I, I sometimes I see a lot of uh, cis girls trying to tell me exercises and things that work. But mm -hmm. the bottom line is, cis women nine times out of ten, not every cis woman, but they have hips and their bones that are wider yes. Yes. than mine. Right. AFAB people tend to have larger hips mm -hmm. in the bone. 
and I don't have that. I have quite, I, I'm not super boxy, I'm actually kind of a bit wide, mm -hmm. but it's not hip wide. No, question, yeah. I think maybe people are also, what about like collapsing? The, the, oh, the so, canal collapsing. Yes, that's a, that's actually a good question. Yeah. I didn't bring this up, but what trans women have to do after surgery is they have to dilate mm. using dilators, which are basically large dildos. Right. But they're not made for pleasure. They're not ribbed and stuff. No, they're just kind of like they're just like a yeah. big phallic shape. You have to do it very frequently at first after surgery, and then as time goes on, it's less and less and less. And for example, let's say you're married to a man with a penis, and you have sex like twice a week. You don't have to dilate with dilators anymore after a certain amount of time. Right. But as long as you are putting something in there to retain the shape, oh. it's going to retain. And even after maybe like 20 years later after SRS, okay. you probably won't have to dilate at all. Okay, interesting. Um, but I know that women like maybe a year after, a couple years after, they get lazy, they start losing depth and start losing okay. room. So keep doing And it that. scares them. So you have to keep up with dilation. That's very, very important. Um, now for you, what yeah. about complications trans on my face? Because I don't really know about many. The biggest complications for phalloplasty are mm -hmm. a stricture and a fistula. And well, that's in the, the urethra. Fuck? Okay, and it's so always the urethra. There's always something up with the urethra. Stricture sounds a little bit like it's Narrowing. Oh, yeah. Oh, so okay. it's like uh, a narrowing of the urethra. Oh, so, they so it just like need, wears down. It like closes like that. So you just need to dilate it. That's, oh, okay. That's common. It's so common. Like, what's happening? I literally found out what that was. Really? I like, thought you would have known that. No, I looked it up today. I, I was whatever. Okay. If you're into that. Cool. I can't. And the other thing is a fistula, which is a hole in the urethra. So if you're like drinking out of a straw, and there's a little hole in the urethra. Oh throat, shit! That's what happens. Those actually sometimes they, they fix themselves on their own. Okay. And you like don't need heal? to. Yeah. You don't need to go to a surgeon, but usually you have to have a revision. So neither of these are really life threatening. No. And obviously, like not all trans people need to have surgery. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Of I forgot course. to disclaimer that. In the we beginning. should disclaimer yeah. that. They're Let's do that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like not everybody's everybody's transition is different and I actually we were at a little event yesterday and somebody mentioned somebody was talking and they mentioned um, That not everybody wants well that but they said something else they said oh they said specifically with like these transition timeline videos on YouTube, which I've done one or several. I don't, I did one timeline, but I've done lots of transition mm -hmm. videos. But I'm always, ma I always make sure to disclaim in all those videos that everybody's transition is different. You cannot yeah. use my transition as a blueprint for yours. There's no step one, two, three no. for trans men or women, mm -hmm. because everybody's body's different. Everybody has access to different resources. Everybody has different access to funds and and coverage and. It's very, very dangerous to see somebody else's transition and say, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Because nobody has the exact same experience. Not at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> We've touched on a lot of things. Is yeah. there anything else you want to mention or uh, ask before we end this? No, I mean, there are other complications for like bottom surgery that I didn't go into, but it's, it's long and okay. there's a lot, but... If you guys have other things yeah. to add to the conversation in the comments, like let us know if you know those complications, or yeah. if you know of anything else that yeah. I didn't mention, of course, like let us know in the comments what we should be knowing, yeah. or what other people should be knowing, and you know, help boost this resource, you know yeah. what I mean? Absolutely, um, and I've made a video on my channel debunking myths about bottom surgery, absolutely. and explaining bottom surgery and all the complications right. that come with it. I will link that in the description yeah. box. We will see you later, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Until yeah. next time, just remember, you are a unique, wonderful individual who has unique needs and unique desires, and you cannot use mm -hmm. anybody else this life is a blueprint for yours because you are you. You are you. And you're beautiful. Love you so much. Bye. <laughs> you did it. Good job. It.